So today our road trip of Baja California Sur continues. We just left Muleje, which was on the east coast of Baja California Sur. And we're heading all the way over to the west coast now, kind of like northwest, that's the direction we're going in, to a place called Guerrero Negro. And we're going there to see salt. <laughs> Apparently there's a lot of uh, salt there, like salt flats, stuff like that. And we're also going to be doing a tour, so yeah, something a bit different from the beaches. And to get there, it's quite a bit of driving. It's like 3 hours and 30 minutes, but it's all just one road. So there's no turns or anything, just one straight highway road all the way there. So we've just checked into our place for the day. It's like a, a little house and this was $30 on Airbnb. So we have a living room area here and then this is like a desk TV and then this is the kitchen area. You can see this poster here so yeah that's like the salt production I guess. We should be seeing that later on in this video and through here is the, the bedroom. Nice size. And, oh, there's another bedroom here as well. Okay, so it's two bedrooms. There's also a poster of the grey whale. So you get those around here in the Laguna, but it's not the season right now. So we're driving to find some salt flats now, hopefully. I don't think they're private or anything. I think they're right next to the side of the road in some areas. So we just looked on Google Maps, some areas that looked really white from above. And yeah, we're just gonna head there, see if we can go there. So we found one of the many salt flats around here. It's really close, it was only like, um, I don't know, like 10, 12 minutes drive from the, the main center of the town. And even on the road, as you're approaching, you already start seeing like patches of salt on the ground. So this one looks really huge. Check it out, it's awesome. Could probably walk over there in a bit. And then even on the other side, there's one here, but that one's kind of uh, a bit liquid as well. Just gonna jump in the swimming pool. Well, the water looks uh, beautiful, I mean the color, but I don't think it's clean. It's probably no? too salty. <laughs> too salty, like the, what is it, Dead Sea in Israel. Yeah, this part down here is way cooler because you get the bright blue little pools, but right in the salt. Wow, that looks amazing. Looks like snow. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if we can walk there. Where? You, you go first. Well, well so. not here. <laughs> no, not exactly. Maybe over there. over there. Yeah, possibly. Well, let me see. I think uh, I can see tracks. Oh no, this is really hard. Wow, that is beautiful though. It does look like some beautiful natural pool to, to swim in. Maybe you can swim in it, I don't know. I mean, it's like pure salt, but I don't know if it would cause you any issues if you'd swim quickly. I'm definitely not doing it as well, especially in this cold. Yeah, literally never been to a place like this. We didn't even know we'd be seeing those like light blue pools, so that was a nice surprise. 
ground's really, it's solid here. Really does just look like snow. Probably for you guys looking, it just looks like we're in the snow. <laughs> but it's not cold. Yeah, it's not cold. You've never really seen snow like properly that much, right? Uh, well, I've seen it like this, not falling from the snow. Oh yeah, you've never seen it falling. Yeah. Wow, look at this though. And I probably should have wore some shoes. All my feet are like really salty now. I should have wore some trainers. I think there's some pools over there as well, Carol. Oh, here too. Do some ice fishing. Oh yeah, it is, look, sad face. <laughs> wow, but it does look like it just goes on for miles. You could just walk all the way into the middle. So I think those drone shots were probably some of the best that I filmed on this channel. We really didn't expect this. We just thought it was going to be like normal salt flats, just white salt flats. We didn't expect all these pools. So it's not just the part we went to, there's just loads of them scattered around everywhere. And that part just back there, the sand dunes, that's where I filmed like the big pool, where you could see the big pool and it just looked amazing, the mixture of the sand dunes, white salt flats and ultra turquoise salt pool. <laughs> And now I think we're gonna head to some sand dunes. There's some sand dunes near here. So yeah, we thought we might as well check them out. So we made it to the sand dunes. What, what are the name of these sand dunes again? Uh, Dunas de la Soledad. Dunas de la Soledad. Yeah, and you can just park right here, right next to the dunes. So yeah, you don't have to do any walking to get to the dunes or anything. And we were actually in another state. We Before we were in Baja California Sur, and now we just crossed to Baja California. Yeah, so the town of uh, Guerrero Negro is right on the border. So you just drive like five minutes up from the town and you're already in the, the other state. A lighter color than the ones that we went to in La Paz. I think these are way bigger as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, some of them. Look at that one. I want to go there. It looks like twice as my size. Yeah, yeah, let's head to that one over there. The wall. Yeah, and it's cool because look, it's right on the, the ocean as well. So sand dunes blend into the ocean. Guys, so this is the nicest sand I think my feet have ever felt. It's warm. <laughs> no, it's warm. Walk here. When it when it goes down, it feels really nice. Oh, it's like a massage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super soft sand. Wow, look at that. 
So on Google Maps, I could see an island that's just down there on the coast. And it looked like a sand dune island. Like the whole island just looked like a bunch of sand dunes. So yeah, that'd be an incredible place to visit. I don't know if you can visit there. Yeah, we're deep into the, the sand dunes now. Probably the easiest sand dunes I've ever walked on because of the temperature. It's like not warm at all. The wind is really cold, re really strong. Every time I've walked on sand dunes before in the past, it's always been like scorching hot. So yeah, that's nice as well. Definitely not gonna walk the whole thing. I can see it goes all the way back there somewhere. <laughs> no chance. Hey Carol, I wonder if we're no longer tropical rainforest people. We're turning into desert people now. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, of course we love beaches, but we also love desert. I think, I guess we just love different kind of things. That's why we keep jumping places. <laughs> yeah. And I guess uh, since we've enjoyed Bar California so, so much, we need to find another like dry location like this in the world to visit. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Morocco, I don't know. Jordan. Major Jordan. Yeah, there are many options and we hope we can do that maybe next year. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. do the tour now it's with a company called Mario's Tours and it's 400 per person so we saw the salt flats earlier but now we're able to go into the company I think and see how the salts produced uh, yeah things like that so we're gonna find out pero me dijo Miriam que, eh, que esta la dejaba cuando regresara ya a las 12 gracias You know what, the whistle for? What? Uh, lunch time. Lunch time. <laughs> they get to go home for lunch. Oh, okay. And then be back by one o'clock to start working again. You can definitely hear that whistle. <laughs> yeah, you can hear all over in town. <laughs> See, that's the training center there. Okay. <sighs> this where the ponds are, they have natural deposits of salt. Mm -hmm. So it's about a meter and a half deep. It works like two ways, to keep it cleaner. Mm -hmm. And so the machines, the very heavy machines can be riding on top. Oh, they can go on top. Yeah. So that's on the, uh, on the floor. The, the machine without the weight, weights 200 tons of weight with the weight of the salt which is 360 that's 560 tons of weight on this wow. on this ground was that the harvester the big one yeah the big one okay so if you want to take pictures yeah sure right So you can see on this side it's uh, a pink shade. So at different stages of the evaporation, the color changes different colors. So basically that small one at the back, 
That one uh, is just making the line of salt and then the big harvester there I think just like sucks it up from the floor and then yeah just throws it into the top of those containers so all three of them work together so right now the small one's making another line here so I guess those guys are gonna turn around and then yeah follow that line and she also told us that the, the price of that wheel that uh, carry the, the trucks is around $15,000 yeah. for just one wheel. Yeah, one wheel is $15,000, so I can't imagine how much the, the whole thing must cost. <laughs> so we got another one coming in with the salt containers. Hey Carol, so it definitely wasn't risky walking on them before when these heavy things... Yeah, if they can, I guess we can. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely safe to walk on. So we've now stopped at the wash plant. So we saw the harvesting part and then those orange containers, those trucks, bring it to the wash plant and I guess that's where they wash the salt because if you could see the color of the salt that was going into the container it was like a brown color, it wasn't pure white and this is also not using chemicals so yeah I'm not sure how they, they wash it so because of Covid we can't go up there to really see the machinery properly on the normal tour without Covid you'd be able to walk up there and then Look at this huge amount of salt all over here. I think that's the most salt I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder how, how many tons there are there. Just I have no idea. So, so big. The biggest dune I've ever seen. Yeah, the biggest salt dune. Salt dune, or dune anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, when it's at the, uh, the highest point, they have over 250,000 tons of salt here. 250,000 tons? Uh-huh. Wow. Now they should have what he tells me about 170,000 tons of salt in this pile. Wow, look at this, guys. <laughs> it looks uh, like crystal. Salt crystal. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, it's a bunch of crystals, right? Yeah, it's, like it's hard, yeah. Yeah, loads of salt crystals. I'm gonna taste it. What? Taste it. You taste it. You have a nice one? It's salt. <laughs> Salty. Salty. <laughs> yeah. Salty salt. Just salt. <laughs> I'm swallow it. Really? The whole oh, thing? Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> strong. Yeah, that is strong salt. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So a bit more information about this place. It was founded in 1954 by an American at the time. And then, uh, yeah, it was obviously a big uh, success. And then he sold it to uh, a Jap the Japanese. The Mexican government owned 51% and Mitsubishi, which you've probably heard of, owns 49%. And the salt's mainly used for like table salt. So table salt that you use. But I think the table salt is mainly for Mexico, but then for industrial purposes, stuff like, I guess, like uh, medicine or, well, just any industrial pur purpose, uh, salt's used in many things, right? It's sent uh, around the world, so Asia, and that's obviously why the Japanese were very interested in it, because Japan's a very industrial country. So we've now come to an artificial port that's here and this is pretty much the final process for the for the salt in this place. So after it goes through the washing machinery over there, it will go on this uh, conveyor belt onto this barge. You can't really see because it's behind but yeah it has a huge uh, salt mount on there. And then these tugboats will will take the barge away. And then the salt gets taken to an island that's pretty close. I think it takes ages to get there because of the big, uh, yeah, the big barge, big heavy barge. But uh, it's an island called Cedros Island. 
And then on that island, there'll be like further processing to make the different kinds of salt, right? You have like regular salt, sea salt, fine salt. I think there's five different types overall. And then from there, a cargo ship will come and then just take it all around the, the world to whoever the buyer was. Guys, check it out. So we got some coyotes here. There's two of them, one here and one over there. So yeah, there's just wild coyotes around here. I think the, the workers feed them and yeah, they're kind of like dogs, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a coyote before. Yeah, see the coyote is scared of me. <laughs> Hello. Nope. <laughs> So our final stop's gonna be some salt flats again. Look at the size of these wheels. That must be from the harvester, right? Yeah, probably. The $15,000 wheel. <laughs> is is that the $15,000 wheel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Plus the rim, okay? Wow, that's a lot of money right there. Yeah. Maybe we should take one, Carol. Yeah, Make, sell it. <laughs> So this area is pretty much the same area that me and Carol filmed at the start of this video. I think we're just at the opposite side. So yeah, before we packed all the way down there. And she just told us this is more like a wastewater, I think from the operations, like the washing and stuff. So yeah, this isn't for consumption here. I think it's just left here. Yeah, so if you're gonna do the tour, obviously no need to try and find these places on your own. You can just wait for the, the tour to take you. I like the light blue. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the sky blue, it's the same color as the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. got these big blocks of salt here look at this that thing's huge it's really it's really heavy I'm not sure how many kilos that is but yeah a lot heavier than I thought oh on the bottom it looks cool like the salt crystals <laughs> that's crazy yeah we come to a huge salt pool here this one looks beautiful biggest one so far my block of salt.
ended up heading back to the Mario tour place, which is actually a restaurant as well. So we had a really nice meal there. It was just 160 pesos for a really big fish dish. So yeah, really, really good deal. And we've come to like the old pier or the old port here. So this is the original port before they made that one that I showed before. Seems to be loads of like abandoned buildings here from back in the day. And you also have the old abandoned lighthouse here. It's way too windy to stick around here, so probably not gonna stay here too long at all. But in the beginning, I mentioned that on Google Maps, it showed like an island that was full of sand dunes. So that's it over there. Really white sand dunes right in the ocean. Looks incredible. If it wasn't so windy, I'd fly my drone over there, but yeah, no chance in this wind. this video something different compared to our normal travel videos visiting the largest salt producer in the world so it's 8 million metric tons of salt produced per year <laughs> pretty crazy and in the next video we're gonna head to a place called La Purissima which is an oasis town so in the previous video we visited Mulehe which is also an oasis town but yeah we're gonna go to this one that's even more unknown even more off the beaten path when we searched online we really couldn't find out anything about this place really but we think you can do some kayaking there so yeah we're hoping we can do some kayaking at least so if you like this video just drop a like to support us follow us on instagram subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this one and we'll see you in the next one